Hello and welcome back to Johnny's Kitchen. So I had a little bit of a surprise today. We were in the garden and I went to check on this lovely fellow. This is Chima de Rapa. Now it might look a little bit like a rather mean spear of broccoli, but this is an Italian brassica it's known as Cima di Rapa or Rapini, broccoli rub or sprouting turnip tops. So it's not really broccoli. It's, it's related, of course, distantly. This is more closely related to turnips. And this is grown for the flowers, just like with broccoli, but also these stems and, and the leaves here are fantastic. This is a delicious vegetable has a little bit of bitterness to it. It makes it a little bit different from the usual sprouting broccoli. So this comes in a bunch of different varieties that are known principally by their time to maturity. So you get a 40 day variety, that's a quick one, a 60 or 90 day or even 120 day variety of Chima de Rapa. There are a few also named or local varieties, but the most common ones are those that are known by the numbers. Um, now this is one of the quick ones, and that's why these plants are reasonably small. They're not bad. That's, that's about what I'd expect from this at this time of year. Now, the normal time, I think, for Chima de Rapa would be the latter half of the year. It's probably not ideal to sow through the heat of summer, but um, grown for harvesting in autumn, this is ideal. And then you can use one of the longer, slower growing sorts and you get a slightly more substantial head to them. What I've done here is get a sneaky early harvest. So these were direct sown very early in the year in cold frames. And of course the brassicas can germinate at quite low temperatures. So eventually they will germinate even early in the year. And the timing works out quite nicely because I can get this to the harvest point. Well, we're near the end of April now, and that will come out of the cold frames in time for me to plant them up with melons. So the timing with this early crop is ideal. I won't now sow this again until I want it for later in the autumn or, or maybe just going into, into winter. I won't be trying to grow this through summer. I don't, I don't think that's ideal for this crop. It is pretty quick to flower. So this stuff is an absolute delight, but if you haven't got this, a reasonable substitute for what I'm going to make today would be some sprouting broccoli and depending on the varieties and when they were sown that of course is still just about in season if you've got a later variety and from a, maybe a late sowing then you'll probably still have some of that to harvest right now so what i'm going to do with this is fairly standard stuff um, there is a classic pasta dish based on Chima de Rapa, the, the, uh, the, let's say the correct pasta shape for that would be orecchiette, the little ears. I don't have any of that. The closest I've got are these little shells. That will do fine for this job. Now that might be prepared with anchovy, garlic, chili, quite pungent flavors that go well with the bitter the bitter leaves and the, the bitter heads on this uh, broccoli rabe or chima de rapa. I'm not going to use the anchovies today. What I've got instead are some spicy sausage and any sort of quite spicy sausage works very well with this stuff. You can also use things like pancetta. Um, if I were doing this in the latter half of the year, when tomatoes would also be in season, I would probably also throw in a handful of small tomatoes as well. But I'm gonna make a very simple pasta dish with the Chima de Rapa 
and it, it takes nearly no time to prepare and it's very tasty indeed. So I'm going to give this a quick rinse. I don't, I don't think there's much in the way of wildlife in there, but I will give this a quick rinse anyway. Then the first job is to drop this into a pan of boiling water for a few minutes until it's almost tender. Then I'll take it out, refresh it in cold water, then I will chop it, and then I will rustle up the rest of the dish. It doesn't take too long at all. So along with the spicy sausage there, I've got some garlic and I don't have to go far. For a chili, I've got a chili plant in the kitchen. It's been here growing for some years and almost year round it has fruit on. So I've got one of those. That is a pretty hot little chili. So I don't want two of those. One of those is, I'd say, reasonably hot. Two of them is pretty painful, but probably in a pleasurable way. And three of them would be painful in a not very pleasurable way. So one of those is definitely plenty for this dish. There's also a bit of heat with that sausage as well. So the prep, very easy. I'm just going to take the ends off the garlic, give them a quick smack. Take the skins away. And I think I'm just going to slice through these. You can chop them more finely if that is what you prefer. But I'm very happy to have quite big pieces of garlic in the dish. I do love garlic. And that is that. This fellow, I will keep the seeds and everything else. I'll just split that and in half again. And I'll very carefully chop through that. I'm not touching this chili. It's so easy to then touch your eye or, or somewhere else. And that is not what you want. That would be very painful. So I don't touch that. If I can avoid it, I keep that there makes a handy little gadget for picking it up later on. So this spicy sausage, I'm just going to cut that into chunks. Yeah, this is quite a soft sausage, full of paprika and chili. It's going to be pretty good with the, uh, with the leaves, I think. And the water's just coming up to a boil, so I will salt that. And then I'll get all of that Chima Darapa in there for a few minutes. It depends how tender your stems are. You want to cook that until you can get a fork through that relatively easily. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, I would think. Stalks, leaves, flowers, the whole lot. So that's been just a couple of minutes in there now and those stems are reasonably tender. So I'm just going to lift that out and drop that straight into some iced water. It'll help it keep its vibrant colour and I won't be overcooking it there. And then you can take that from there and drop it on the board. It's 
So my pasta water is coming up to a boil. I'll give that a generous pinch of salt and then in with the pasta. And in a few minutes, I will start with the sauce. It doesn't take quite as long as the pasta does to cook. I'm just gonna give this a very quick chop, nothing too clever. And that is absolutely fine. That's all the prep done. In a minute or two, I will start cooking the spicy sausage and it will be finished in a few minutes. I'm just going to start with a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Not too much because I expect that sausage will render a fair amount. But you can see it's turning the oil orange with all the paprika and chili in the sausage and Whatever you're flavoring the dish with, whether it's just chili and garlic, or with some spicy sausage, or with anchovies, you want to get that flavor into the oil so that when that coats the pasta, every piece of pasta is going to have that flavor with it. The other chili, I'm using the end of the chili just to move it around. I'm not going to touch it at all. Just needs one minute like that. And now in with the garlic and I want to be very careful with this. I don't want the garlic to brown so it won't be long before I get the Chima de wrapper in and then a little bit of moisture. It's a good pile of garlic, but you can't have too much garlic, it's not possible. Right, before that catches, I'm going in with the Chima de wrapper. And I want to add just a little bit of the pasta water at this stage, straight away. Give it a bit of moisture and yeah, that's it. On with a lid, a minute or two and it's done. You take the lid off from time to time and just adjust the moisture level. I don't want this to be too dry now. That looks just about right. So a little pinch of salt in there. I'll check the seasoning in a moment and then some black pepper. I don't need a huge amount because of the amount of chili in there. Let's have a look at that pasta. So the pasta is almost cooked, still got a little bit of bite to it. Um, I'm just going to put that in with the sauce now. It can sit there for a couple of minutes and soak up those wonderful flavours. I'm keeping the pasta water handy in case I want to add any more. 
it gets a little bit too dry. Well, that is a pretty vibrant green. Right, let's have a little look. Now this is the sort of pasta dish that doesn't really need cheese, but it might not need it, but I rather love it. So it's gonna get a little bit anyway. I'm just gonna take a couple of curls off the side of this Parmesan. lovely yeah very nice let me get in there and see what this tastes like mm. now that's not bad at all there's a reasonable amount of spice from the chili and sort of the meaty and spicy flavor from the sausage, but it's not at all masking that wonderful Chima di Rapa with its slight bitterness, but that bitterness is so good in dishes like this. Hmm. This is a really wonderful vegetable. So if you haven't grown it before, I really do recommend it. And it's probably too late to sow right now that would then leave it cropping in the, the hottest part of the year. That's not ideal, but um, get hold of some seeds and sow them in the latter half of summer to crop into autumn. And this is wonderful stuff. I'm not a huge fan of broccoli myself. My, my wife loves it, but Chima Durapa, I really do like. Mm. It makes such a fantastic pasta dish as well so anyway i hope you enjoyed that visit to johnny's kitchen that's all for this video thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now